Hey, a seahorse. How are they how are they fighting from a submarine? Like how is this working? <laughs> when you're a mage, I guess you can technically cast magic from a submarine. Who knows the limits of magic, but like how exactly is like a black belt? fighting in this instance, other than getting out of the water. You guys don't have, like, you guys don't have underwater gear. You can't hold your breath for infinite amounts of time. I mean, you're warriors of light, but, like, you know, still insane. I don't have any Aerogas. I just remember we didn't buy Aeroga. I had to choose between Aeroga and Haste, and I chose Haste. Which, hopefully, I won't regret, but I'm only really gonna use it for boss fights. Haste would have been better. I think Haste would have been better in the ATB games, though. Because obviously, ATB, Haste is a bigger impact. When we get to FF4, we'll deal with ATB. ATB combat's where it's at. When it comes to turn based Final Fantasy, that's where it's at. idiot. Noggle, Optu, Kagura. We're missing the Koro enemy and we're missing the Noggle. There's the Koro enemy. Sharabdis. Guard, Ruffia. Take a break. You've been working so hard. Ah, yes, I guess the blessing of the water crystal is like the only thing that makes logical sense. That's very true. Wait, I see another area over there. Are there only two areas? Or I see a third, actually. There's like some areas I see little openings of like, hey, you can dive underwater and get to like new land you couldn't do otherwise. At least that's what it looks like from this mini map. I guess we should start looking around because I think this is how we move on the story. We'll just find the enemy as we you know, go to the temple and look for Yune's loot or whatever. Oh, hello. Nothing over there. Yo, Optu, it's the fish again. How is it the first entry, the one I never found? Underwater map seems underutilized. Yeah, it was originally an NES game. I guess they were limited in what they can really do. And the Pixel Remaster is basically the base game. With like, these new redrawn sprites and graphics. Personally, I think Tales of Eternia does underwater travel the best. I think Tales of Eternia did it really well. Or FF7, because FF7 you fought, um... Emerald weapon was it? You fought Emerald weapon underwater. That was a cool way to do it. There wasn't much of it in FF7, but that was like the main thing. You would fight Emerald weapon there. Like the original, obviously. Tales of Eternia did underwater the best, I think. It has like all these, um, it had like these optional dungeons and like these, uh, it had this overarching side quest with like these codes where you had to like look in random caves. I think it honestly did underwater travel really well. 
And even Lufia 2 had a, had a mermaid village. Which I think that was its underwater travel. It just had a village of mermaids. Which is a cool concept. Underwater travel is just so underutilized. So anytime you see it pop up in games, it's like, hey, it's neat. It's always really cool. It's just an underutilized concept in general. So just seeing it pop up is honestly enough to be like, hey, it's pretty cool. Hey, give me a high potion. Hey, the Temple of Time. Ten chest. But the fire had an underwater section? Do you mean the original? I've only played 3 and 4. I know for a fact 3 and 4 do not have underwater sections. What am I doing with you? I don't really know. Just attack, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Wait, how many- wait, 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 Before I start talking with chat, how many entries do I need? Oh my word, there's a lot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine entries to find. Or is it eight? No, it's eight. Eight is still a lot. They always hit you with, like, at least, like, three to five. Eight's a lot to hit you with. I don't have a key. Oh, maybe a thief can unlock this? Sure can. The original one? Yeah, I figured. I, I know for a fact. Oh, I figured that's what you we were talking about. I never played Breath of Fire 1 and 2. They're both for the Yesness. I never played them. Maybe one day. I am a fan of 3 and 4. I'm currently doing... I have to get back to recording Breath of Fire 3. I'm doing a playthrough of that, but I haven't recorded it in a while because of IRL stuff. The IRL stuff that stopped me from streaming for like three days. And I want to do Breath of Fire 4. Maybe one day I'll play 1 and 2. I know 1 is on like the Switch Online thing. So, the whole I ever hear about Breath of Fire 1 is that it's like really grindy and kind of dated, so I'm not sure if I'll like Breath of Fire 1 that much. But I do like 3 and 4. I think 3 and 4 are some of the best PS1 games to exist, so I mean, maybe I'll try them out one day. Okay, wait, turn off encounters while I'm a thief. I don't want to fight as a thief. Um. Hi, Wyvern. It's a heal. Yeah, very unfortunate. Capcom, uh... Didn't really do much with Breath of Fire after like the olden days. It's very unfortunate that it died. At least from what I played three and four, it could have been a uh, could have been a great series. Never played the original two, but I mean, all I hear about them is that like, especially one, I hear two's like translations not great. But other than that, I hear like there's a fan base for it. I hear one is like pretty dated. It probably has the same Lufia 1 problem. Like, Lufia 1 is so dated and there's really no reason to play Lufia 1 when Lufia 2 exists. Dragon Quarter was that bad? Oh yeah, the PS2 game that I hear nothing about. I've also never played. It's like... It's like a dungeon crawler, isn't it? It's different from 3 and 4. I never played that one either. I don't really hear anything about that game. But I mean, it must have not been that great if I don't hear many things about it.
Uh, we get a couple of, uh, wait, wait, do I have, um, males on Ingus? Alright, nothing really good. Let me see here. 126 all the way to 133. I keep thinking I see a question mark, but I don't as I skip through that. Missing 126, 129, 131, and 133. Okay. So tired of these doors. Oh, I, okay, I need to be a thief to move on. That's annoying. It's a bit too weird for a Breath of Fire game. All I ever hear about it is that it's apparently so different from the others. I never actually played it myself, or I don't even know what the game... Like, I know what the game looks like. I don't even know how the game plays, really. I just hear, like, oh, it was a very different direction, and it must have not been good enough to keep the series going. So... Up. I really, I really like Breath of Fire 3 and 4 though, and I don't know, maybe I'll enjoy, maybe I'll enjoy 2. I feel like with 1 and 2, from how I hear them talked about, I feel like it's a Lufia 1 and 2 case. I would maybe not enjoy 1 as much, but maybe 2 would be pretty good. Although Lufia 2 is like one of the best SNES games, so I don't know if Breath of Fire 2 is that good. an SNES gamer that much. SNES games are good, but my my time is like PS1. PS1 onward is like that's my time. When I think of classics I really like, I think of like PS1 games. That's not to say SNES games don't have classics. You got FF6. FF4 was an SNES game. Lufia 2. I still want to play Illusion of Gaia at some point because I hear that game is really good. I never played that one. That's apparently a really good SNES game. I want to check out. There's definitely some hitters. Oh, the dragon. My mind does always, like, go. When I think of, like, classics, my mind always goes to PS1, though, over SNES. The SNES definitely has some hitters. I did play Secret of Mana, but I think Secret of Mana is kind of overrated. <laughs> I don't see what people see in that game, personally. And Chrono Trigger. Can't forget Chrono Trigger. Which I like. I should be clear. I like Chrono Trigger. Not as much as a lot of other people, but I still like Chrono Trigger. I mean, Chrono Trigger is a classic. I will, I will, like, I understand the respect Chrono Trigger gets, even if I don't feel it myself. I still think that was a good game, and I should play it again. One day. Bum, bum, bum. If you're not a fan of turn-based games or 16-bit era if you're dated. I mean, yeah, I played SNES games of that era, so I mean... From what I hear about Breath of Fire 1, it sounds very much like Lufia 1, where it's just probably really dated. And there's not really a reason to play it unless you're a purist. That's what I hear people say about the games. At least the SNES versions. What is happening, by the way? These lightning enemies are mad annoying. Or just kill me, I don't care. I did just like quick save. 
whole game was on the clock time runs out you game over using any dragon stuff takes time away you're straight up punished for using the main gimmick oh that sounds really dumb what the heck what was capcom thinking that does not sound fun at all <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go back and heal. I keep oh, there's the loot I need. Noah's loot, the mythical instrument lost to the flow of time, began to play a tender tune. Still need best area entries here, though. Anyway, I don't know. Breath of Fire 1 and 2 have never really interested me as much. I'm just kind of like, I'm a Breath of Fire 3 and 4 guy. Like, they're good. Maybe one day I'll play them. Dragon Quarter doesn't sound like I want to mess with it, though. <laughs> I have other games more on the, like, more important to play than Breath of Fire 1 and 2, but they're, they're like, on a list that's like, hey, if I ever want to play them, maybe I'll check them out. Still have to do Breath of Fire 4 for the channel and finish Breath of Fire 3. So, I mean, they wouldn't happen anytime soon. Hopefully I can finish Breath of Fire 3 like in the next month or two and then I can get the Breath of Fire 4 either later this year or next year. That's the that's the plan right now. Okay, you know what? I honestly just like I want to go heal and then we can finish getting these bestiary entries. I still need three more chests too. Three is the peak of the series. And yeah, three is like the most popular one, isn't it? Three and four are honestly kind of, um, in my mind, I think they're tied. I understand why people hate on four for some of its changes, but I mean, I think four is a really good game. Four feels very different while not being like a Dragon Quarter case, you know? Because Dragon Quarter sounds like it completely like feels different from the series, but like, or feels like a different, unique game with its own identity, while still feeling like Breath of Fire to an extent, if that makes sense. I honestly think liking 3 or 4 is kind of like... I, I respect both opinions. I kind of tie them. Maybe when I do my Breath of Fire 4 replay, like on YouTube, well, it'd be my first playthrough for YouTube, but when I play Breath of Fire 4 on the channel, maybe then I'll have a definitive answer which one I like more. But I, I think favorably upon both of them. I think they're both really good games. I think 4 has, like, the slightly better story. Like, I like 3's story and some of the, the second half, mostly. When I think of Breath of Fire 3's story, I mostly, like, the second half is, like, where it's at. Because Breath of Fire 3 is kind of plagued with a slow start. As much as I like that game, it's kind of plagued with a slow start. It does get a lot better, like, in the second half. And by that, I mean, like, in post-Angel Tower. And Breath of Fire 4, I really like the whole ryu Folu parallels. That's probably, like, the highlight of that game. I think they're both basically equal quality, is what I'm trying to say. I think both are respectable... Peaks of the series. Oops. Okay, I want to find all these chests and then we can start fighting because I'm tired 